Today we will start the study of magnets and magnetic fields. Magnets has been known to man for many many years. Ancient Greeks and Chinese knew about the magnets. Now that time it was called the lodestone. It was said that an ancient Chinese shepherd you know that a shepherd uses a, a stick with a metallic kind of a hook. Apparently, when he was guiding a flock of sheep, his uh, stick got stuck on a rock. It got stuck on a rock. Now, when he checked, he found that the metallic end has been attracted by the rock. Well, apparently, that is the first discovery of magnetism. Well, what is the specialty of a magnet? Well, of course, we know it attracts magnetic materials. Is that right? A magnet attracts magnetic materials. Well, I have a magnet here. You can see it's, it's very strong. So a magnet attracts magnetic materials. And Another property is the directional property of a magnet. If uh, you suspend a magnet freely like this, no matter how you rotate it, it will always come to rest in the north-south direction. And that is the origin of the magnetic compass. I'm sure you have seen magnetic compasses. Is there anybody who hasn't played with magnets when you are a child? Now, this is a magnetic compass. Well, it works only when it is flat on the surface. You can see the north end of the magnet and the south end of the magnet. When it is freely pivoted, the magnet will come to rest always in the north-south direction. And this property was used by ancient mariners, people who traveled by ship to find the direction because there was no other way to find directions. Well, I have actually put all these things down, you know, in the PowerPoint and uh, we will take a look at it as we move on. Well, here is the illustration of a magnetic compass. The, the end pointing north is called the North Pole and the one that points south is called the South Pole. And this is another illustration of a magnetic compass. So a magnetic compass or a magnet has a North Pole and a South Pole. Now, the North Pole and South Pole of a magnet are actually similar to the positive and negative charges in electricity. So, we will see there is a lot of comparison between electricity and magnetism. Now, materials that are attracted to a magnet are called magnetic materials. Now, from your experience, can you tell me what are some of the common magnetic materials? Well, iron, nickel, cobalt are all examples of good magnetic materials. Just like in electricity, there is interaction between positive and negative charges. There is interaction between magnetic poles. Now, like poles repel and unlike poles attract, which is something very easy to understand. A North Pole will repel a North Pole and a North Pole will attract a South Pole. But the problem in magnetism is, unlike in electricity, magnetic poles do not exist freely. In electricity, you have a positive charge and a negative charge that exists freely. But in magnetism, these poles do not exist freely. Now, what happens if I take a magnet like this? See, so this is a magnet which has got a North Pole and a South Pole. 
If I break this into two pieces, each will be a magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole. If I break this into a million pieces, each will be a small magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole. Now, such a small magnet with a North Pole and a South Pole is called a magnetic dipole. In other words, there are no magnetic monopole. There are no magnetic monopoles. Magnetic poles always exist as dipoles. Now, all magnetic materials, iron, cobalt, nickel, are all made of these tiny magnetic dipoles. That's an important concept. All right, it is now time to talk about magnetic field. I don't think it is difficult for you to understand the concept of field now. We talked about the concept of electric field. A field is a three-dimensional region, is that right, where a force is experienced, a force is felt. In fact, any kind of force can be expressed by talking about a field, gravitational field, electric field, magnetic field. So what is magnetic field? The magnetic field of a magnet is a three-dimensional space around that magnet where it will exert force on other magnets. That's right. That is the definition of a magnetic field. Now, a magnetic field around a magnet can be studied by using field lines. Are you familiar with the concept of field lines? Yes. In electricity, we talked about field lines. And in electricity, we used a positive test charge as a standard charge. Now, what do we use as a standard in magnetism? We have a North Pole and a South Pole. And remember, they don't come as individual poles. So we got to make some imagination. So as a concept of imagination, I would say, let us take the North Pole as our standard pole, as our test pole. So what would then be a field line? A field line will then be the direction in which or the path that is taken by a test pole. A test pole is a North Pole. Now, if I place a test pole near a magnet, what will be the direction in which it is going to move? What will be the path that is taken by that test pole? That will be a field line. So, we can actually describe magnetic field using field lines. A field line is the path taken by a test pole placed near the magnet. And our test pole will be a unit north pole. Now, a unit north pole placed near a bar magnet will move away from its north pole and move towards its south pole. Now, look at this illustration here. If I place a unit north pole here, it will move away from the north pole and move towards the south pole. So, I can actually draw large number of field lines like this. So, this is a picture of the magnetic field of this magnet. I would like, to take, I would like you to take a good look at this. The field lines are crowded around the poles and they are farther apart as we move away from the magnet. So, the path taken by the unit test pole is called a field line. And I have uh, illustrated that further. If I keep a very small magnet, since a unit north pole is rather difficult to find, I would rather use a very small magnet like the one I showed you. Now, here, I can use something like this. And if I keep it near the magnet, you can see the North Pole will point away from the North Pole and towards the South Pole. And moving it around, I can actually trace 
a field line. And in a similar way, I can trace any number of field lines. All right. Now, magnetic field lines that describe a magnetic field are similar to the electric field that we have been talking about. So you're familiar with it. Now, therefore, if I ask you, what is the magnetic field of a bar magnet is like, you can now tell me how it looks like. Now, we talked about magnetic field. We talked about electric field some time ago. And if I ask you what is the unit for measuring electric field, I'm sure you can tell me. What is the unit for measuring magnetic field? Magnetic field is measured in a unit called Tesla, represented by the uppercase T. Now, a common unit used for measuring magnetic field is the Gauss, uppercase G. And the relation between the two is 1 Gauss is 10 to the power of negative 4 of a torque of a Tesla. So Tesla is actually a larger unit. Okay, let me see if I can take you to a website and show you how to trace the magnetic field line. Now if you notice there is a small magnet which well can be approximated to be a dipole. That's the North Pole, that's the South Pole. Now, this is the south end of a bar magnet, this is the north end, and you can see how the small magnet is behaving. The north is pointing towards the south. And if you now move it around, you can actually trace a field line. Well, what all you need to do is click on it and move. There you have one field line. You can place the magnet anywhere else and draw another field line, there you are, now a third field line, a fourth one, we can draw any number of field lines like this. Now look at the way the magnetic field around the, ba around the bar magnet develops, is that right? That's very interesting. All right, I would like you to look at uh, this website and maybe play around with it and see how the magnetic field around the bar magnet looks like. Now, how do you know if a magnetic field is present in a given region? Well, what all we need to do is to use a compass needle like this. If there is a magnetic field, you can see when I bring the magnet you know there is a magnetic field created and what does the compass needle do? It sort of get agitated. Now what it's trying to do is to align itself in the direction of the magnetic field. So a compass needle will always want to align itself in the direction of the magnetic field. So you can use a compass needle to detect a magnetic field. Now a magnetic field can be created only by a magnet. Is there any other way to create a magnetic field? Well, we're going to see an electric current can actually produce a magnetic field. So, in our next discussion, we're going to look at the electric field created by, I'm sorry, the magnetic field created by an electric current. I would like you to look at uh, this demonstration compass needle here which will detect the presence of a magnetic field. Well, you know if I bring a magnet, there you are, it is uh, moving around showing that there is a magnetic field. Now, I have a battery here. I'm going to keep a wire over the compass. I'm going to allow a current to flow in it. Now when I connect these two, a current is going to flow. Now watch what happens when the current flows. When the current flows in the wire, a magnetic field is generated around it. Well, that's an important concept. An electric current has a magnetic